Okay, we are doing homework two. We have uh, overall 24 questions. Uh, and as you can see, uh, there, we don't have any calculations. We are just learning uh, definitions, terminology, and getting familiar with uh, um, statistics. So question number one, researchers conducted a study to determine whether magnets are effective in treating back pain. Pain was measured using the visual analog scale and the result given below are among the results obtained in the study. Higher scores correspond to greater pain levels. Is this an experiment or an observation study? Okay, before we answer this question, let's uh, first of all understand what is experiment, what is uh, um, observation uh, studies. So, observation study is when researcher observes the effect of specific variable, of specific uh, the, um, characteristics. So, which as it and uh, observe uh, whatever is happening naturally without making an uh, intervention. Okay, but uh, experiment that's uh, opposite to observation. We, we are providing uh, intervention. We are manipulating the situation and then observe uh, the effect of it. So, um, let me see. Let me bring some example. Um, for example, uh, when we want to uh, find out in the case of observation, behaviors, behavior of, of sharks, let's say. You can't uh, do anything with shark, right? All you can do, uh, the, the scientists, all they can do, uh, stick somewhere some uh, monitoring device and uh, observe the behavior and find the answers on the uh, bothering them interesting uh, to them questions, right? That's an observation. Or if you want to observe habit of children, uh, let's say based on what they uh, decide uh, what kind of game would be uh, interest of what age of children. So they observing and uh, behavior of children and uh, oh, then they, uh, by their observation, they decide that for, let's say, age uh, the two and three, these type of uh, uh, the games, uh, three to five, these type of games, and so on. Now, how about treatment? Tre treatment is uh, involve, involving intervention. Let's say uh, everybody heard that um, oatmeal is helping uh, lower cholesterol, right? So before you collect the result outcome, you are going to feed uh, um, people who are in the sample of this experiment. Uh, you are going to feed them with oatmeal, correct? And measure first um, the cholesterol before the experiment and then other. <clears throat> so that is experiment. Or uh, when uh, you want to know that they say cinnamon is uh, good for diabetes, lowering uh, blood, uh, sugar in the blood. So this is also uh, experiment, right? Because you put in tea or uh, in the food uh, some uh, cinnamon, right? And have them uh, have the uh, members of sample eat. Well, and then uh, you can uh, get the results and accordingly um, um, draw some decision. So in the case of experiment, we practically can, can be more specific and target the uh, subject of our interest. And in contrast, uh, often uh, researchers uh, often use observation 
uh, to learn basic be background information in the topic. So another example of observational data, let's say it can be uh, get the record of bank transaction, right? They can interfere, stop transaction or modify, but they can get the uh, records and uh, study these records and try to read by records. So that's observation, correct? Um, okay. So let's go back now to answer our question. So what do we have? It says we need to figure out if we have experiment or we have observation. So reduction in pain level after magnet treatment. Uh, N is a sample size, X bar is a average, S is a deviation. So the fact that um, we have um, let me see, a researcher conducted study to determine whether magnets are effective in treating back pain. So they are using magnet uh, for back pain and then collecting the result, correct? That's already intervention, yes? Therefore, it's going to be, so uh, the two answers that suggest observation, it's going to fall out and it's going to be uh, two an between two answers that have experiment. So let's read and find out which one. So the study is if that's uh, experiment, it's going to be their A or C in my case. The study is an experiment because the subjects are systematic sample. Uh, I have no idea what means systematic sample because every study uh, that we do, we do based on sample. So that's an obvious thing. Let's see the D's. I suspect this is going to be, I mean, excuse me, uh, it's C. I suspect C is going to be the answer because we dropped two, eliminated this one, so the fourth one left. The study is an experiment because subjects were given treatment. There we go. And that treatment is magnet for back pain. Okay. Good job, next question. A study of an association between which ear is used for cell phone calls and whether subject is a left-handed or right-handed was conducted. The study began with survey, uh, so with a survey emailed to 5,000 people belonging to an uh, the autology online group, and 717 surveys were returned. Autology relates to the ear and hearing. Okay, in the study, an experiment or observation, uh, is this study experiment or observational study? So in this case, uh, we can say, do they provide uh, intervention no, right? Because it says it was provide study of an association uh, which ear is used. So they pro uh, the practically they observed it was used uh, right ear or left uh, the left handed or right handed. Correct. So in this case, I am using an observational study. Uh, the study is an observation since. Let me see, it wasn't given any treatment. I would say this one, uh, this, hold on, let's read everything. So subjects were not given any treatment and then some treatment was applied that there was not applied, that's not true. Low proportion of survey, that is not the case. Study did not use a, a simple random sample. The fact that 5,000 people, they took 717 uh, surveys were returned. This is all sample and data collection. Uh, the study did not, okay, a high proportion of survey. We don't uh, have high proportion here. And the study used uh, a simple random uh, sample. Yes, looks like they used simple random sa uh, the sample, but uh, it has nothing to do with observational study. 
and it says it is observational because the subject were not given any treatment. Just like I said, we only observe. We don't uh, the, put any intervention, all right? So this is gonna be our answer to my belief. Okay, question number three. So here we are going to learn um, sampling techniques. So I see random sampling, convenient sampling, stratified sampling, systematic sampling, cluster sampling. I'm going to cover every single one of them. So uh, you can answer your homework uh, questions. Okay. So uh, let's see. Simple random sampling. So random numbers, uh, okay, uh, for simple random sampling, with every possible sample of the same size has the same chance to be selected. So random sampling is, can be, let's say, the lottery, right? When you, uh, the trying, uh, grabbing, to, uh, the lottery uh, and every single person who is playing in lottery have a same, equal, same chance, correct? Or uh, let's say uh, we are choosing sample of uh, students um, to evaluate dean of the um, university. So what we are going to do, we are going to generate random numbers. First of all, give students uh, the students numbers. Everybody will get numbers and then generate random number. And uh, uh, whoever has that number of students, they will step up to uh, do evaluation of uh, the dean. Um, it is reliable, considered reliable method of obtaining information where every single member uh, of the population is chosen randomly, merely um, by chance. So, and obviously each individual has the same probability, same chance of being chosen to be a part of sample. Okay. Um, Another, let me bring example, uh, organization of 500 employees. Um, if in, in organization with 5, 500 employees, let's say HR team decides on conducting team building activities. So then uh, um, the, each 500 people has an equal, will have equal opportunity of being selected. Yes? to uh, uh, the conduct uh, activities. Okay, what is coming next? Uh, convenient sampling. Convenient sampling is uh, uh, the simplest one. Uh, convenient sampling is, let's say, um, I need to do some survey uh, in uh, what I'm going to do instead of choosing which one which, what type of customer to question or do any uh, the technique. I'm just going standing, let's say, in front of publics and whoever walking in, I am uh, surveying. So that is convenience. Uh, convenience, uh, uh, the method depends on ease of access to subject, such as surveying customer in a mall, like I said, or passers uh, by on a busy street, for example. It is usually termed as a convenient sampling because researchers is of carrying it out and getting in touch with the subject. All right. So I already explained this. We are clear. Uh, moving to next one, uh, stratified. So let's cover uh, stratified. What means uh, stratified sample? Stratified random sampling is a method in which the researcher 
divide the population. Again, to remind you, population, we are not talking population of the state or population of somewhere else. Uh, any uh, subject of our interest, the, the total amount, all we call population, uh, subject of research. Okay, so researcher divides the population into smaller group that uh, they will not overlap each other and represent, but they all represent population. For example, let's say uh, all, all groups, let's say it can, could be children, could be um, uh, strata, stratified, meaning strata. Uh, it will be another strata, it's going to be strata of uh, teenagers and then uh, students and then uh, adults, for example. Those are, this is going to be stratified sampling. Okay, why we call sampling, you will understand. Uh, random sampling stratified, you will understand in a minute. So uh, we are dividing population by uh, some, let's say, property. Um, so it can be by uh, gender, it can be by income, it can be by age, it can be by any eating habits, anything. Okay. So while sampling, these groups can be organized and then draw sample from each group, which means you don't draw the entire uh, group, but just sampling. They take some sampling, random sampling do from these groups, okay? That will be stratified. Um, another one, uh, for example, researchers looking to analyze characteristic of people that belong to different annual income division. And uh, the and that will uh, they create strata strata meaning groups according to their annual family income. Let's say less than two thousand twenty thousand, between twenty thousand and thirty thousand, thirty one and forty, forty one and fifty, and so on. By doing this, researchers uh, the conclude that characteristics of people belonging to these uh, different income groups, right? And this from income income uh, groups, they will uh, draw randomly some samples. That's why we call stratified random sampling. Systematic, systematic sampling. What is systematic sampling? Uh, systematic sampling uh, method researcher used to choose the sample me me members of population on a on a regular basis, at the regular intervals. Let's say it uh, requires selecting a starting point. Uh, you can choose any point as a starting point for the sample. And sample size, uh, based on sample size determination, you can repeat uh, this uh, pick the item or repeat your ex but, uh, um, experiment at a regular interval. Um, this type of sampling method has a predefined range and the sampling technique is the least time consuming. Well, for example, let's say um, I, am, uh, I am an inspector and going to Publix to check every fifth gallon of milk. So, and I see on the shopping window, there are gallons are standing. I'm not going to take necessarily the very first one. I'm not, doesn't have to be necessarily very first one as a starting point. I can start in the middle, okay, of the shelf. Take it in the middle and then go, let's say every seventh gallon, okay, and ask shop assistant to give me every seventh gallon. That's called systematic uh, in a, at regular interval. We are providing experiment. So, Another example, a researcher intends to collect systematic sample of 500 people, for example, in a population of 5,000. So, uh, but the male or female numbers each element in the population from one through 5,000, and they will be, uh, and they will choose every 10th individual to be part of the sample. Okay, so that's a systematic uh, sample. And the last one is left cluster sampling. So cluster sampling is a method where researcher 
Again, divide entire population into section or clusters representing a population, just like in a case of stratified. But class, uh, the cluster includes the, uh, the whole group. And they also divide into clusters, into groups based on same demographic parameters, say like age, sex, location, and so on. So it's, that part is common between uh, stratified and systematic. But unlike it in the case of uh, stratified sampling, in the case of cluster sampling, the whole group is gonna participate in the sampling. While in the case of stratified, we would break into groups and then do random sampling, right? But not in the case of cluster. Another example, let's say um, United States government wants to evaluate the number of immigrants living in, uh, in the US. So in this case, which uh, area they are taking? Obviously it's gonna be uh, California where we have uh, border, the, the most of them are there. Texas, uh, they moved to Florida, Massachusetts, Colorado, and so on. So this way, conducting survey will be more effective uh, because every state is uh, uh, represented as a cluster and they survey uh, the state and uh, um, uh, report uh, to uh, Washington DC and they put together uh, the survey and figure it out uh, how many immigrants are in US. Will it be precise information? No, because statistics never give 100% uh, any uh, recommendation. Okay, so once we have this, we are going to complete our uh, the, uh, the next question. And that is uh, question number three. All right, let's see. Identify type of sampling is used, is used random, systematic, conventional, uh, convenience, stratified, or cluster. Comorant uh, bird population densitizes were studied by using the line uh, transect method with aircraft observers flying along the shore, shoreline of Lake Ontario and collecting sample data at uh, at interval of every uh, 19 questions. Okay, the fact that it's gonna be every 19 questions, what does that tell you? It's gonna be systematic, yes? Bingo. What is next? So, let me see, okay. A research center poll used text message to 12,567 randomly selected adults to ask them about willingness for vaccinations. So text message, they pulled randomly, it says randomly, right? So take a guess what it's gonna be. Of course, I hear you saying random. And uh, so on, you can use uh, your way, um, let's say question number five, okay. Yeah, you can, uh, whatever I explained, you can use um, to uh, do your assignment. Let me see, question number six. What is it going to be also? Cluster uh, convenience stratified, also cluster convenience stratified. Okay, let me, uh, what is uh, question number eight? Um, okay, let me do question number eight. A researcher collects sample data by selecting every uh, the 30th hospital employee. Uh, every 30th hospital employee. I don't even need to continue reading. It's a systematic, right? Every 30th. 
Well, let's try. Well done. But if it says selecting first 30 employees, that's going to be convenience uh, because we don't care who it is. As long as it's first 30, whoever come in, we are taking the third to survey. Okay, what is uh, next one? Number, this is number nine. Let me see. A medical student, blah, 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 blah. Okay, you can do it. Um, now, pay attention. Uh, in your homework, it's whatever questions I am ask, uh, answering, it doesn't mean automatically your homework question can have this, the same answer when it comes sampling techniques. Because they can change one word and the uh, uh, answer has to be different. Let me see. A medical student, <coughs> excuse me, medical student collects sample data on the um, prevalence of smoking among male in, the, in, the, in her state. State by serving all of the male she, account, uh, the, she encounters in the clinic where she's doing her residency. So what do we have here? Prevent of smoking among males. A medical student collects sample data on the prevalence of smoking among males in her uh, state by serving all. The word all. Okay, here is interesting thing. First of all, the fact that is uh, uh, questioning males, that means the population is broken down into males and females, right? Okay, so that's already uh groups which means it's uh, automatically we are thinking either either stratified or systematic and next because it says serving all of the males right then it will be definitely cluster if it would be say survey some of the males then that would be stratified we understand Okay, cluster. You have to be careful and follow the wording. Oops. How so? Let me read. Male in her state by surveying all of the male she encounters in the clinic where well, I insist it's a cluster. Everything else should be wrong. Let me see what they choose. Second attempt and final attempt. Let's see. That is not true. It cannot be convenience. They, if they choose all males, that means they break. This is typo, guys. This is definitely cluster because uh, they choosing all males, okay, of smoking among males. So that's a group right there. And then in the, uh, the, she's serving all of the males. So this is typo. It definitely, it's going to be, has to be cluster. Okay, and let me see other questions. How it uh, look like? It's same thing? No. So question number 10 is... Uh, let me see what we have to do. What are our choices? Ah, back to observational study or experiment. So the physician health study involved 22,071 uh, male physicians. Based on random uh, selection, 11,037 of them were treated. Okay, just the fact that was treated, it's already experiment, right? So, because there was intervention, there was the patient were given uh, some uh, either medicine or whatever, but definitely it's an uh, experiment. I don't even have to read the further. Why is it experiment? Because 
it's apply a treatment to. Okay. Bingo. Question number 11. Oh, there is continuation. Okay, so let's read this. Uh, what is the major problem with this uh, study? Well, let's read. Well, in this case, I have to read the whole problem. So, well, I have no choice. I have to read it, the whole thing. So, uh, physicians have study involved uh, with, uh, so many male physicians and based on uh, random selection, 11,000, blah, 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 of them were treated with aspirin and the other uh, so many were given uh, placebo. The study was stopped early because it became clear that aspirin reduces the risk of myocardial, myocardial in, at, um, infarction, sorry if I am not spelling properly, by a substantial amount. Okay, so what's a major problem here? So first A, uh, there is convenient sample with a voluntary response. Uh, no, that's not voluntary response there. Second one, result apply only to individual with heart disease. That is not true, that's not the case. Uh, there is no blinding or replacing, that is not true. There is blind pre uh, the placebo. Uh, result apply only to male, bingo, this is it. Only male, male are pa participating. Okay, question number 11. A medical researcher uh, tested the difference in systolic blood pressure level between male and female students who are 12 years of age. She randomly selected for male. Okay, now this one is going to be observation definitely because she doesn't do anything. She just uh, measuring, collecting information. And that is because does not attempt to modify, right? Let's uh, check. Okay, very good. So what's a major problem here? Let's find out what we have here. Research difference is systematic male and female who are 12 years old. She randomly selected for, for male and uh, for female. Okay, let's go through answers so we can figure out. The sample includes male and female students. Now, this is cannot become the problem. It's very good. They take male and female and then con compare. Uh, sample is too small. Yes, I would say that's what it is. Only four uh, female and four uh, male. How can four female and four uh, male uh, give you result for entire population? of 12 years old. We have what? How many 12 years old? How many millions we have? So only four from here, four from there. It's not gonna work. I'm not even reading further. Okay. Bingo. Number 12. Okay, do we have the same type of questions? Ah. This is uh, different now. What kind of answer we have here? So I can explain. Randomized block, matched pair, completely randomized. Okay, so let me go over. So let's uh, learn uh, most appropriate designs, which one uh, are here. Randomized uh, block. What is randomized block design? It's an experimental design where experimental units are in groups that are called blocks. 
So the treatments are randomly allocated to the experimental units inside each block. When the, all treatments appear at least once in each block, we have completely randomized one. So it will become completely randomized. So let me see. Example, uh, the researcher selects subjects randomly from students' population. So the researchers assign subjects to six blocks of free such that students within the same block have the, uh, the, have the same or similar IQ, okay? So we've, within each block, each student is randomly assigned to different teaching methods. Well, and then going to measure the results, okay, of these teaching methods. So, when should um, randomized block um, design be used? When we have unwanted uh, effect variable that affect outcome. Uh, this variable also has to be able to be measured. Let's say if uh, our sample is not large enough for uh, simple randomization of equal groups. So another example, um, block of uh, randomized block design. For example, if let's say we have a farm and it has a field of corn that is affected by some disease. And we want to test the efficacy of uh, different fungi sites in, uh, in controlling it. So we can, uh, let's say, split the field into some blocks and randomly treat some sections of each block with various uh, fungi sites to be tested. Okay? That's what it is. Uh, next one is uh, completely randomized. So completely randomized uh, design is a type of experimental design where the experimental units are randomly assigned to different treatment. It is used when the experimental units are believed to be uniform that is when there is no uncontrolled factor in the experiment. So let's bring example, for example. Um, let's say I, uh, the, the teacher decide to take uh, uh, Viva in the class and randomly starts asking students. Here, all the participants have equal chance of getting into experiment, right? So like with, our, the, with this example, every student has equal chance to get a question, correct? Now, it would be a um, randomized uh, block if I would break, let's say, the class into groups, into blocks, and then randomly from each block, I would ask questions to some students from that block. Are we understanding? So, what is the, uh, uh, the when it is best used? So, completely randomized design, uh, best uh, uh, suited for uh, experiment with a small number of treatments. Treatments are assigned to experimental units completely at random. Every experimental unit has the same probability of receiving the treatment. So randomized is performed using random number table, table computer program. So that's what is a completely random design and the abbreviation CRD, completely random design. Okay, and the last one matched pairs. Okay, what is matched pairs? Matched pairs design is an experimental design where participants are matched 
in pairs based on shared characteristics before they are assigned to groups. So um, in uh, one participant from the pair is randomly assigned to the treatment group, while the other is assigned to the control group. So for example, um, a study of 100 people for a diet. Each subject would be paired with another subject with a similar age and weight, obviously, right? If you uh, choose a skinny person and then heavy weight person, it's a study will be biased, correct? So it's, uh, the, okay, then the pair would be placed into the study group such that uh, each subject is an uh, opposing study group, diet or no diet, okay? So that's an uh, um, example of matching group. And another example, uh, let's say uh, researchers uh, trying to, trying uh, uh, to form um, a weight loss drug and the participants uh, would need to be matched to make sure they wear all the same weight, same height, well, at least similar, and had similar diet. All right? And uh, what are uh, the um, positive and pros and cons? Advantage and disadvantage of uh, matched uh, pairs. So, Losing two subjects if one drops out, okay? So out of this matched pair, if one is uh, losing the subjects, then the other one has to fall out also. If one subject uh, decides to drop out study, the other one is gonna fall out also. Time consuming to find matches, obviously, and impossible to match, sub, that's a con, so it's impossible to match subjects perfectly. And what are the characteristics of a matched pair? Match pair uh, design is an experimental design where, well, that's a characteristic we already said, they have to be uh, sem similar um, characteristics, be it weight, be, be it age, um, be it whatever they need to be match. All right? So, what a match pairs design in uh, experiment used for? Uh, it helps a researcher draw um, causal inferences by controlling the confounding variables. It helps ensure that the experimental groups are equivalent before the experiment, hence the experimental treatment likely caused the differences the researchers will be observed afterwards because they are similar before the treatment and uh, the difference after is gonna be uh, obtained as a result. Okay. What for, uh, uh, the, what is uh, matched pairs used for? Matched pairs test. So it's commonly, it's usually, it's used to test the difference in, uh, in the mean or uh, median of paired observation. So in the uh, next uh, chapter, we will learn mean and median, okay? So as it's a measurement of, of central tendency. All right, let's uh, read uh, our question. Currently, there is uh, no approved vaccine for the prevention of infection by West Nile virus. Okay, a clinical trial of a possible vaccine is being planned to include subjects treated with the vaccine while other subjects are given placebo. So do you see here blocked, broken into bro block? No. Do you see here match up pairs? No. 
So what we have left, completely randomized, right? Design. Bingo. Next one. Um, well, the next one uh, to answer, I am looking, it's also, it's a simple uh, uh, random um, sample. And then uh, it's asking the way it was collected sample. So that one I will leave on you so you can, you can already answer it. Moving to number 14. We already know cluster uh, systematic, you can answer this. Uh, next also. So let's see what is next. This is also you can answer, you already know this. Uh, let me see, 18. What do you have? A sample is a numerical measure. Okay, um, sample related, so how is a sample related to population? Okay, we can do that. Uh, let me explain, although I have explained already previously, but I don't mind to go over. So population, the bottom line is we wanna search, uh, uh, make a research on entire population of subject of our interest. But the thing is um, most often we cannot involved the entire population in, in the uh, research, in the test, uh, in the experiment, uh, by basic uh, reason that uh, it's uh, huge, it's too big usually, uh, it's very large amount. Therefore, we are taking subset from population and that subset we call sample. Oh. Here it is, the answer subset. All right. Moving to next question. That's question 19. Okay, that's a question on uh, uh, thinking a little bit. You can do it but you know the topic. This is also sample and population, parameter and statistics, just to remind you, parameter is uh, the um, represent uh, characteristics of the uh, population, statistics represent characteristics of sample. Um, here also uh, set is population or sample. So moving further, you can do it. We already know the sample population. You also can do it. If uh, by some reason you can't uh, find the answer, instead of going four times until you see which one it is, you can ask me, I, can, I will explain and help you. Okay, all right. Uh, we are in question number 23. This is also sampling technique, uh, it's sample or, no, it's a sample or uh, population. You can answer this question. So let me read the data. Uh, the, uh, the carbon monoxide level of 23 of 91 people who escaped a burning building. So, 91 people so a carbon monoxide level of 23 and what it says determine whether the data is of population or sample the carbon monoxide level of 23 of uh, 91 people who escape the uh, burning uh, building uh, it doesn't say that those are all 91 all together that means, unfortunately, some people uh, did not escape. So, which means I would think this is a um, sample, right? Which sample it is, you can think about it. It's either A or B, right? Okay. Moving to 24. Ah, okay, we are done. All right.
Okie dokie then. See you in uh, week three.